protected areas preserve values. These values can be animal and plant species, as well as ecosystems. These are the values that need to be maintained in a sustainable way. It is therefore important to be able to measure the current state and the evolution of these values, as well as to detect the threat they are facing. In Burundi, for instance, an invasive plant species, the lantana, has taken over the Rusizi National Park completely. To avoid this situation, the problem should have been identified upon finding the plant in the park, but it's now probably too late and the park is now, has lost an important part of its ecological value now. Ecological monitoring is a key step in adaptive management, but it is not the only tool that can get information from the field. Indeed, other means such as anti-poaching surveillance, research, tourism can also provide a lot of information actually. Okay, this is agreed, but ecological monitoring remains the main source to guide decisions and actions for site management. Yeah, sure. And in the early 2000s, when the population of black rhinoceros of the north Cameroon, in the north of Cameroon disappeared, strict ecological monitoring, like collecting droppings for instance, would have allowed to identify the imminent threats of these extinctions, or at least to stop the useless surveillance once the species disappeared. We know that a protected area is a special kind of territory with several characteristics. It is defined, recognized, dedicated, and so on. And it is managed for the conservation of nature. Keep in mind that this is its primary goal, as we explained in the MOOC on Protected Areas Management in the fourth sequence of the first module. But ecological monitoring can be applied to many territories and spaces outside of protected areas as well. For example, swallow populations are being monitored in Europe in order to measure the impact of pesticides. In the case of a protected area, ecological monitoring intends to show that the goal of the protected area is con so its conservation is being achieved, actually. So monitoring is hence intentional and targeted. Indeed, and this is especially interesting to have ecological monitoring in a protected area since it is, let's say usually, a significant ecosystem on the national or regional level and it contains complete or at least sufficiently representative ecological processes for successful research. Since the protected area is being managed, It offers a good working base with means and infrastructures and sometimes available and qualified staff. A protected area allows for long-term monitoring and can provide historic data, which increases knowledge. It is a good place to experiment and it allows for a wide distribution of information to other protected areas of the same category, for instance. It can also be a good medium for sharing results with different targets in schools or universities, but also with the general public. So therefore, protected areas play an important part in raising awareness for conservation. As we saw in the MOOC on protected area management, the management of protected areas is organized according to a management plan defined in a participatory way with clear goals, concrete activities and assigned responsibilities. Ecological monitoring has to be integrated to the preparation of this plan to ensure it will give relevant indicators, but also that it will be effectively implemented. It's useless to plan actions that cannot be assessed or to associate them with indicators that cannot be measured. Ecological monitoring must be discussed, shared and understood by everybody involved in its implementation. And the park manager need to take ownership of the plan from the very start. Ecological monitoring is obviously part of the protected area management, but it's also one of the tool, tools used to measure the effectiveness of said management. As we saw in the MOOC and the protected area management, monitoring, monitoring needs to be subject to protocols as well to the reliable methods, methods to be implemented. It is important to note that it is one of the rare possible sources of information regarding the impact of our management actions or decisions. For example, by showing the evolution of the environment over time according to what we do or what we did. 
Therefore, regular monitoring of the state of plants can show that repetitive bushfires in grassland lead to the disappearance of some useful grass species. This finding will allow to choose a better adapted season and a better periodicity for this ignition of those fires. Ecological monitoring accounts for the state of the protected area and identifies the pressures and threats it is facing. It is important to base to base it, to base this ecological monitoring on matters that will allow making the best decision in controlling those risks. And since means will necessarily be limited, monitoring needs to be prioritized. This is very important. And this should not compete with more ur urgent actions in the protected area. This reinforces the necessity for good coordination with all those involved in the management, in and out the, around the protected area, from the implementation of the monitoring protocols onwards. To make it simple, a useless uh, ecological monitoring program is worse than none at all. Ecological monitoring is also an important tool in training and motivating staff. It empowers rangers, eco-guides, volunteers, and includes them in the management process in a wall, not as mere implementers, but as the providers of information that is at the very heart of the decision-making process. By giving access to new tools such as cyber trackers, GPS or camera trap like here on the screen, ecological monitoring broadens agent skills and since they are in touch with researchers, their personal knowledge is being developed. Monitoring is also a powerful tool in collecting funds for protected area. By providing reliable and transparent information regarding the state of the conservation and the progress that have been made, it makes it possible to justify the use of the funds that they have received. Yes, in a documented way for once. By proposing new targets or activities, it justifies access to additional funding. It serves as a tool for accountability. We know that, we understand that, but also for prospection. Ecological monitoring is also a vector for internal organization. It strengthens the collaboration between the different departments of the protected area, like the admin, the research, the surveillance, communication, training departments, and so on, because it's a multidisciplinary and needs everybody's input to be successful. For example, storing collected data is key to monitoring sustainability, to process this information within the protected area and store all the data the entire organization is engaged. Beyond the management aspects, ecological monitoring, of course, has its own distinctive role, which is to inform on species and ecosystem. Now we know that. You get to know what species inhabit the protected area, in what numbers, during which season, at what places, and so on. On this basis, ecological monitoring will measure the variations in space and time, short, medium, long term, you can then understand the interactions, measure the impacts of the pressures, and better estimate samples to be taken. For example, monitoring elephant population within the Kruger National Park and monitoring their impacts on plants has allowed to determine the threshold at which cell population needs to be maintained at in order to prevent damages on the ecosystem that will also be detrimental to other species. The next step is to figure out how to do it, but that's another story. Ecological monitoring is crucial in the PA management process. It is quite surprising to find that many parks don't have a monitoring protocol in place at all. Others have one, but it doesn't give any information on the state of the values, or it is based on outdated techniques, or the produced results are not understood or shared or used. And this is not the case of a minority of sites, unfortunately. Uh, it's the situation on a vast, of a vast majority of protected area where management has turned into a plain and systematic repetition of actions with no effort put into assessing the impacts, actually. Sadly. So sad. Mm.